Hey guys, it's Danny. Welcome to another episode from our basic houseplant care for beginner series. Today it is time to talk about some cacti. Aren't they cute? But they're also pretty dangerous. <laughs> Did you guys know that the first plant I ever collected was not orchids, it was actually cacti. And I was eight. For my age, I had quite a big collection. But as I grew, I found out on my own skin, literally, that growing cacti can be a little painful. So slowly and surely, I kind of gave it up, either because I was a clumsy kid, either I got preoccupied with school, I don't know what happened, but I do remember painful memories regarding these guys. So I was a little apprehensive to start collecting cacti again, although I really loved them. And since now more than ever, we have so much variety at the flower shop and garden centers with very affordable prices, I thought, well, how about we start again? But this time I will make sure that I'm not gonna go through the same amount of pain. And I want to share my plan with you guys. I'm gonna show you how I want to grow cacti in the safest way possible. Today's episode together with this entire series is of course sponsored by repodme.com, who not only offers you all the orchid supplies you could need, but also houseplant supplies. Yes, cacti and succulents included. From potting mixes to pots, some of which I'm gonna show you today, to fertilizer, pest control and accessories, they do have a lot of supply that I'm sure will make your life with houseplants generally much, much easier. I will link it down below to their website and also to the products that I am going to be using today. Feel free to check them out at any time. Their customer service is absolutely fantastic. You guys tell me. So with that said, let's just start. I have a few pots here. We are going to use them, but also I will show you some setups that will not necessarily require pots. Cacti are some of the most popular houseplants out there. And if you've never owned a cactus, which I doubt, but still, I will tell you what makes them so great. First of all, they are extremely, extremely drought tolerant. Many of these species grow in very arid areas, very low in humidity and also water areas. So they are adapted to withstand drought better than most other plants we can grow in our home. This makes them extremely tolerant to neglect, or should I say a lack of time. I'm sure none of us want to neglect plants on purpose, but life gets in the way. That is absolutely fine. You need to take care of your life. Well, these guys will not just die off on you because you didn't water them for a month or two. <laughs> no, they're probably gonna be just fine. So this is the main attraction for these plants. But not only that, absolutely how they look plays a major, major role. They look very intriguing. And as I was saying, there is such diversity nowadays that you can find all sorts of shapes and sizes and sometimes even colors. Now, the bad thing with cacti is that they're a little bit scary and they can inflict quite a bit of pain if you're not careful. And I do remember a myriad of occasions where I had to spend a bit of time plucking the spines out of my skin with the tweezers. It wasn't funny at all. So if you can relate to this, if you have pets, if you have children, or if you yourself have been pricked by these guys on a regular basis, I feel your pain, trust me. It's one of the things that made me not grow cacti for a lot of time. But now I moved into cacti country. Everybody has cacti and succulents in their gardens since this is a subtropical climate. And the variety nowadays, it's just remarkable. So I wanna get into them again, but I certainly don't wanna go through the pain. And for this reason, I came up with a new growing setup, which I don't know if it's new, but I thought it will work. Let me show you. Ta-da, glass enclosures. Now, I don't mean the traditional terrarium, which is closed and keeps in a lot of humidity, but these decorative glass enclosures, which have an opening, whether they're bowls like this, or even globes, or some other weird shapes. All of these things are very popular right now in flower shops or garden centers. And if you cannot find them locally, I'm sure you can find them online, Amazon, eBay, whatever store of your choice. Bottom line though, because they are mostly covered, even if by mistake, you're gonna poke your hand too close to the cactus, most likely it is you will not get hurt. And that sounds fantastic to me. Now, there are two ways that I personally would go about this. First off, using a pot, and second, 
not using a pot. Obviously, the second method will be slightly more risky. I'm gonna leave it for last, but first, let me show you how I would display and actually grow such a cactus easily in a bowl. One of the major soft spots of cacti are their roots, specifically suffocation and rotting of the roots. Since in their environment they don't actually benefit from very moist soil, they have adapted to grow in pretty airy and dry soil for most of the time. If we maintain our potting mix way too wet, there is a very high chance that in time the roots will suffocate and rot. Hence why cacti are typically potted in very well draining tiny pots. Shallow pots are the best because these guys do not create long extensive root systems. They actually create enough to maintain them rooted and stabilized in the soil, but compared to other houseplants, they really make really tiny root systems. So you don't need big pots. And in fact, if you are not sure how to mix your soil, you might end up having your potting mix stay way, way too wet if the pot is too big. So as I was saying, drainage is very, very important. The way to solve drainage in a glass container, which does not have drainage, is to actually use a pot inside the container. Because the idea is not to provide a terrarium environment, but just to protect your hands at the end of the day. So whatever container can act as a barrier between the cactus and yourself, while still provide aeration and good drainage, will work, right? So that's exactly what we're gonna do today with at least some of these guys. A good potting mix for a cactus is a very well-draining one as well. We don't want the mixture to be very heavy, very clayey, and retain a whole lot of water. So more commonly, we tend to use a mixture of soil with amendments such as perlite, even bark, leca, sponge rock, all sorts of materials which are not very highly water attentive but provide a lot of ventilation. Now on Repot Me, you can go as far as having a mixture more suited for orchids, like a bark mixture. That can definitely work as well, particularly in environments which are either more humid, either a little bit cooler, in which evaporation of the water is slowed down. If you know you have issues with potting mixes drying very, very slowly, that type of a mixture might actually work better for you in the case of cacti and succulents, since it doesn't retain all that much water. But in environments, which do have a lot of heat, maybe a lot of dryness, something a little bit more soily might actually work a little bit better for you. So my medium of choice will be a little bit more soily because I live in a very, very warm subtropical climate. So what I'm gonna do is place a layer of soil on the bottom, I forgot my gloves. I do actually need to get my gloves because he's not friendly. <laughs> okay, better. These will add just a little bit of protection, not a whole lot. With bigger cacti or with the ones that have bigger spines, there are actually gloves on the market specifically for them. You can also use paper, like newspaper paper, not tissues or anything. And you can sit the entire cactus on that paper and in this way you will be protected from the spines. But mine are pretty, pretty tiny. These will have to do. Also, I like to use long nose tweezers. This is actually an aquarium intended tweezer which comes very much in handy with terrariums. So I added a first layer of soil on the bottom of my pot. Then I'm gonna squeeze a little bit the soil of the cactus. And now I'm going to catch the little guy with my tweezers. I'm not squeezing or anything and try to push him out. And there we have him. We have quite a lovely root system. What I typically like to do is remove the top layer of any soil. This is where typically you're gonna have most of the organic debris, fallen leaves, even if not from this plant, but other plants and nurseries. You can have a lot of organic material just breaking down here on the top. Also, here on the top, you can have fungus gnat larvae. You can have fertilizer buildup or residue on the top. So what I always do is remove the top layer. I'm not so concerned about the bottom. This appears to be quite a good soil for this cactus. I don't need to remove all of it, but I do want to loosen a little bit the root ball, just a little bit. This will make it a little bit more easy for me to arrange it in this pot. I know that some people don't like to disturb the roots while other people suggest that you should what they say, break the root memory. I'll be honest, I've never noticed a difference in the two techniques. I just do what I feel like pretty much. And I do feel like I want to loosen a little bit the root ball just to make sure my plant fits well in my new pot. 
and let's see. I think it is a perfect fit. Just gonna arrange the root system a little bit in the pot. There we are. And then just place medium around it. For very small plants, you can actually use teaspoons as well. And this will make it much easier for you to arrange the potting mix around the plant without damaging or disturbing the plant. All right, one of the things that I do actually like to do with cacti, and I know not many people do this, but I do, is I do press gently on the potting mix downwards. These guys don't have incredibly extensive root systems, so anchoring themselves might be a little tricky, especially when you repot them. By pressing a little bit on the soil, I make sure they're a little bit more stable. Now, I'm not actually compacting the soil because I have so much perlite here. This is 50% perlite and 50% soil that even if I press a little bit on the soil, I'm still gonna have a lot of air pockets that the roots will love. Another thing people like to do is add a top layer of pebbles. This again has the benefit of stabilizing the plant in place, which at some point I might add as well. I might also go for a top layer of bark, which will make it look like mulch. That can work as well. But it's important to know that just like mulch, a top layer can maintain the pot a little bit more wet. So if that's what you need in your environment, that's great. But if you're already struggling with soils and pots that remain wet for a long period of time, I suggest that you skip on the top layer and just make sure that you press gently on the medium so that the plant is stable. And you know what? That's about it. The next thing we can do is put it in our little glass bowl and hey presto, we are done. <laughs> Now to water this plant, you can obviously use a watering can, which has a fine nozzle. So it doesn't actually distribute a whole lot of water at once. And this Repot Me watering can is absolutely fantastic. No joke, I actually use it all the time. Very satisfying. But if you find you need an even smaller nozzle, you can try to find a wash bottle. You can find these in craft stores or science stores. This is actually a wash bottle used in chemistry. I found it locally. You can find it online as well. I do believe I actually have one linked in my Amazon store down below. And with this, you can actually direct even better the flow. It's gonna take a little longer <laughs> to water. But you get the idea. There are other things you can use as well, obviously like a turkey baster as well, that can work. But the idea is not to water your plant way too much. Now at the bottom, you can see I have a little bit of water accumulated. That is absolutely fine because this soil was very dry. So what it will do now is absorb all of that water that pulled down. So I'm gonna let it be for like an hour and then come back. And if I still have excess, I'm gonna dump it out. But Obviously, if you don't want that excess there, you can just remove the cactus, dump the excess, put it back, and then let it sit like that for weeks to come, even depending on your environment. In time, you will learn exactly how much water to dose, so you won't have to take the plant out, risking getting pricked. But I hope you can see how this setup is a lot, a lot safer than if the plant were to be exposed. Now, obviously in time, this guy will grow up. You can go for bigger globes or bowls as well. In fish stores, sadly, you can find a lot of fish bowls, which I would never use for fish, but definitely I would use like tiny little terrariums or displays for cacti and other things such as this. And obviously you can, if you want to, use this bowl without the pot, just having it like a sort of mini open terrarium, which is what I'm gonna show you next. It will be method number two, that though is a little bit more of a tricky situation, but it still works. Next setup, these really cute hanging globes, which can work for pretty much any plant, but it's especially good with tiny little cacti. Now, the main drawback is that of course, we don't have drainage quite at all here. So all of the water we're gonna pour in will pretty much stay there. It's gonna be pretty hard to try and discard it, particularly if the soil already absorbed it and it's saturated. So this will take a higher degree of attention, but it can be done. So I have here a tiny, tiny little guy. Let's get him out. Maybe I can do this without my tweezers. Yes, I can. 
this guy has an even smaller root ball, which is okay since this globe is considerably tinier. So again, I'm gonna remove the top layer and quite a lot of the mixture as well. Not necessarily voluntarily, but it's just coming off since I don't have way too many roots. Now for this project, I will definitely need my tweezers because it's gonna be pretty hard for me to place it inside, but with the tweezers, it's gonna be great. Also, I'm gonna use my little teaspoon to place medium inside this globe. I'm also using just a decorative pot to support my globe. I find that it's the best for keeping this stable. So what I like to do is grab the cactus, not from its body, but from the root system or the base of its body. I'm gonna place it inside, gonna snuggle it in, and then push the soil around him like that. This is a very, very tiny cactus, but it's okay, it will grow. And at some point, indeed, it will outgrow this globe. Now, again, an easy way to water this plant is to use the wash bottle if you don't have a small nozzle watering can. And all you do is just squirt a little bit of water. And it's actually better to use a lower quantity of water, even if it's not necessarily how much you would generally use. Because remember, this does not have drainage. So it's better to maintain this cactus slightly moist and then dry than saturating all of this soil with water. I can actually add just a little bit more. There we go, but that's about it. Now, this setup is a little bit more tricky for obvious reasons. If you put too much water, it's gonna be really hard to remove it. You can try to tilt the setup a little bit and some water might fall off, but if the soil already absorbs it, it's not going to drain, you're just gonna lose soil. So you might have to redo all of the project. Also the fact that it's not an open top enclosure, evaporation might be slightly impaired as well. So it is in your best interest to use less water than too much. If you're not sure, just put a very tiny quantity and observe your plant. If you see it starts to shrivel, add a little bit more water, but if it's okay, then it's okay, let it be. With cacti, you don't need to worry all that much about watering. Alrighty, so now let me show you some cute displays for the setup. Now, my globe has a little hook up top. In flower shops and garden centers, you can totally find these types of stands or displays on which you can hook the tiny glass ball. And look how beautiful it looks like. So you can actually put a spotlight on your cactus and emphasize it while also making sure everybody's safe around it. A little tip, if you don't find these stands anywhere near you, try banana holders. Yeah, that's the thing. And you can find online some hangers and they look very similar to something like this. They can definitely be used as displays. Another way to display this setup is by using a magnet hook like this. And some of you already know, I really, really like these guys. I have them listed in my Amazon shop down below. What you can do is attach this hook to a metal surface. For example, if you have a metal shelf or something of the sorts, and you can hang the glass globe on the hook. I have the Vischio IKEA cabinets, which have a metal frame, and I really, really like to attach these magnetic hooks on the sides of my shelf and grow some tiny plants closer to my grow lights. And I think this is how I'm gonna keep my cacti because they don't actually take any space on the shelf. They do benefit from a lot of light being very close to the grow light. If it's one thing that cacti really, really love is strong light. So whatever the setup you choose, make sure you place your cactus in quite a bright location. You can opt for natural light, but also for grow light. And if the light is strong enough and you make sure to care for them properly all year round, they can even bloom for you. And blooms of cacti are wonderful, absolutely wonderful. So I'm hoping that I will get some blooms from my cacti this year even though they are really, really tiny. But as far as setups goes, I think these setups are great for me. So if you like what you see, go check out Repot Me and also go to your flower shops or garden centers and look for all sorts of glass globes, terrariums, and so on. Again, I would not recommend you use full terrariums like with a lid because these guys really don't appreciate high humidity. They don't need it. But things that have an open top or just have an opening somewhere, these can be great. As I showed you, you can actually use pots in these setups. And actually this one 
looks pretty great because all of the water will drain here and it will not maintain the pot super soggy. Oh, this is a wonderful terrarium now that I see it. I'm gonna put one of my cacti in this setup. And I would advise if you're a beginner, if you've never had cacti, go for a potted setup first and, you know, then try something else out. Use a proper potting mix and a proper watering method. And I think you should be fine even in this setup. Obviously these guys will grow in time, but the good thing is they grow very, very slow. So you will not have to change setups every six months or not even every year. You can actually have a cactus like this for quite a few years in the same setup. So I hope this video is inspiring to you. Let me know in the comments down below if you have other setups that you like to grow cacti in, setups which will prevent you from hurting. I'm curious to know and I will keep you up to date with my cacti. Maybe, maybe we're gonna have even more because oh my goodness you guys, the variety here I've never seen anywhere. It's just mind-boggling. So stay tuned for more cacti content. Thank you for watching. Thank you Repodme for sponsoring yet another episode from this brand new series on my channel and I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye! I don't understand why you're